What's up, YouTube? Capital G here looking at a brand new Link Monster coming out in Circuit Break. This is Master Boy, and as soon as I saw this, I was like, okay, Konami, I like where you guys are going with this. Obviously, if you're an old school Yu Gi Oh player like I am, you'll definitely recognize this card and you'll just recognize the resemblance to Star Boy, and obviously, that is what it is akin to. I believe that this is Star Boy. He's just, you know, he's kind of grown up, and Star Boy is a super old card. I mean, Star Boy actually predates me playing Yu Gi Oh! because I believe off the top of my head it came out in Metal Raiders and that's like the second set. I started playing with Magic Ruler the third set. So Star Boy is a super old card and it's really cool because first we had Mrs. Radiance and now we've got uh, Mass Star Boy and it looks like he kind of got a little older. It looks like he has a little more sophistication. He's got his top hat and uh, the monocle. I'm definitely liking it. So let's go ahead and look at the card and I am actually very relieved to say that it seems like Konami kept the original effect intact. It definitely seems like they remembered the legacy of the card and obviously the art would, you know, the art and the name would tell you that they were probably going to do that. So this is a uh, Link 2. It is Water Aqua Type. The cursors point um, I believe down, left, and right. So those are pretty good Link cursors for uh, Link 2. You definitely don't want like a Link 2 that points like uh, you know, up. I, I wouldn't want that at all. Let's see what your effect is, Matt. Star Boy. So uh, he requires two water monsters. It says all water monsters on the field gain 500 attack and defense. All fire monsters on the field lose 400 attack and defense. That is taken basically from the original Star Boy. Uh, the only difference is the original Star Boy didn't cut down the defenses, and uh, this one actually increases your in your defenses and takes away your opponent's defense. I don't think it's gonna ever be that relevant. The defenses. I don't know. Maybe if you're running the metaphors or something like that. But being able to give your entire field 500 attack, including this card, which means that this card is basically. 1900 it's pretty legit i guess unless uh like skill drains on the field or something like that it says that if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect you can target one water monster in your graveyard add it to your hand you can only use this effect of mass star boy once per turn so basically it has the totally awesome effect built into it where when it dies you basically just you know get a uh, water monster from your graveyard to replace it i actually like this card a lot and don't get me wrong, it's not a powerhouse or anything like that, but when you think about the decks that can use it, I definitely feel like they're going to run it. The, the, the first couple of decks that came into my mind, or the first few were uh, Paleozoic, Mermil, and Dino Mist, and I think that it definitely has good applications in all three of those decks. Uh, number one, if you look at Dino Mist, I think that Dino Mist is a deck that struggles to find lots of damage, um, because Dino Mist is kind of a slower control-based deck, and sometimes you might have just two Dino Mist monsters on the field, and you may have your scales, but Dino Mist doesn't exceed a lot. And uh, the whole totally awesome Bahamut Shark play, that's pretty much going to be dead thanks to the new rules with Link Summoning. So you're not going to be able to rely on that anymore. And Dino Mist don't want to exceed anyways because... Obviously, they want their pendulum cards going to the pendulum scale, or excuse me, going face up to the extra deck. So, this is a good way of a Dino Mist taking two random monsters that they have on the field, you know, converting them into damage, into Mass Star Boy, and then you just pendulum summon those two monsters back, and it's like, okay, we got basically uh, 1,900 free damage, but our other Dino Mist monsters are obviously going to get stronger as well. I think that this card could definitely fit into Paleo. So, the only concern about Paleo, not that they won't be able to go into this card extremely easily, which they will be able to but if you're using your paleo monsters like the traps you bring them back they will be banished by that and that's why a lot of paleo players exceed for totally awesome and they go into the uh you know opa Benia and stuff like that they go into those because when the exceed materials go to the graveyard you know obviously they don't get banished but i definitely would play it in paleo because um making all your monsters, I believe the Paleos are 1,200 attack, you know, making them all, uh, what's it called, 1,700 attack is definitely legitimate, especially because, you know, they're unaffected by certain things, and then you have Mermil, I would assume that Mermil would probably want to use smaller monsters, like, you definitely don't want to be using, like, your Megalos and your Abyssius and stuff like that, but I could definitely see, maybe you normal summon a Deep Sea Diva, Diva gets you your Nephthabyss, and it's like, okay, from there, I'd be willing to give up a Nephthabyss and a Diva because those two cards aren't really going to be able to do that much damage if i could trade that in for a mass star boy and give the rest of my field 500 attack and defense that's basically the same thing as having like a best dweller on you guys if you've ever seen mermail make a best dweller like that 500 definitely adds up in that deck it's actually a shame that norton is not going to be around anymore because um 
Norden and Mermil would basically turn Instant Fusion into a one card Master Boy. But I really do like this card, and I think that it is pretty solid in those three decks. And I think that it is really going to be good for Dino Miss because I don't think Dino Miss have a lot of great going to extra deck monsters. I mean, they will still have the Cyber Dragon Infinity play, but if your Cyber Dragon Infinity gets Kaiju, you just lose so many resources. And you know, the Bahamut chart, totally awesome play. It's just it's really not gonna work anymore unless you already get like if you get a Master Boy already out then you can do that play but for the most part i would just go master boy and then just pendulum summon and go back into beatdown mode so anyways what do you guys think of this card maybe there'll be some more water archetypes coming out soon also, do you guys think that Konami is going to continue to convert a lot of those older cards from like Metal Raiders and stuff into Link Monsters? At this point, I think it's kind of a foregone conclusion. I don't understand why you would just do Earth and Water Attribute. Seems like you're probably going to want to do the entire Attribute pool. Anyways, whatever you guys think, leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. As always, subscribe if you have not already.